Welcome to the Project Finance Modeling course. In this lesson, we will talk about valuation, discounted cash flow analysis, and internal rate of return. In order to understand the concept of valuation, we will have to learn about the future value of money. What is a future value of $1,000 deposited into a bank account at 5% interest rate one year from now? Well, 1,000 times 1 1.05 is equal to 1,050. So, the future value is 1050. Let's now reverse the problem and ask ourselves, what is the value of $1,050 today? Remember, $1,050 will get one year from now at 5% interest rate. The value of $1,050 today is $1,050 divided by 1 1.05, which is 1,000. So, this concept of bringing future value to value today, or to present value, is called discounting. The interest rate that we used is called discount rate in the context of valuation. And the conclusion from our exercise is that money today is worth more than money in the future. Why? Because we can deposit the money today into a bank account and earn interest income. Because we may not get the money in the future. Because we generally prefer to consume and spend money today to save money and defer our consumption to some time in the future. In the context of valuing a company or business, or asset, we perform valuation based on the cash flows. For example, shareholders receive cash flows in the future in the form of share capital redemption and dividends. Shareholders' cash outflows are equity investments made into the project. So, after determining cash flows, we have to think about what discount rate needs to be applied to those future cash flows. First, because we are dealing with shareholders, our discount rate is related to equity investment, which is called a cost of equity. Cost of equity is a return demanded by investors who are investing into a business. There are two ways cost of equity can be measured. First is a formula called Capital Asset Pricing Model. It is academically sound and extensively used by practitioners, especially in the realm of public equities or companies listed on stock exchanges. According to Capital Asset Pricing Model, Cost of equity is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta times market risk premium. Risk-free rate is usually a yield on the long-term treasuries. Beta is a measure of a stock's volatility in relation to the market, or in other words, it measures the sensitivity of the stock returns to the market returns. And market risk premium is the additional return an investor expects to receive from holding a portfolio of risky stocks instead of risk-free assets. Capital Asset Pricing Model is beyond the scope of this course, so let's leave it here. The second method to measure or estimate the equity return is concept of hurdle rate. A hurdle rate is the minimum rate of return on a project or investment required by investor. Where do these hurdle rates come from? They are derived from industry rules of thumb. Hurdle rates are extensively used in private equity and infrastructure investments. So, once we determine the discount rate, typically, we have to convert it into a discount factor, which is 1 divided by 1 plus the discount rate and raised to the power of year from the valuation date. The valuation of an asset is then represented by net present value, which is total cash flows times the discount factor. Let's quickly review an exercise on discounted cash flow analysis. Let's assume that our project's life is 6 years. We have our dividends and discount factor based on the discount rate of 15%. We then calculate discounted dividends, which is dividends times the discount factor. We calculate the discounted dividends in this fashion for all years. Then, we sum the discounted dividends to get the present value of dividends, which in our case is equal to 86. Suppose that initial investment was 50. Then, this simple project's net present value is present value of dividends less the initial investment, which will give us 36. So. The investment is worthwhile as long as the net present value is equal to or greater than zero. Let's now spend some time on another concept called internal rate of return, which is extensively used in private equity and project finance. Internal rate of return, or IRR, is a discount rate at which net present value of the project's cash flows is zero. If the project's IRR is larger than the required rate of return, or hurdle rate, the investment is worthwhile. So, going back to our simplified valuation case, 
let's now assume that our discount rate is 40%. And based on that, we calculate our discount factors. We then again calculate the discounted dividends and present value of those dividends, which is equal to 50. Our initial investment did not change, so it is 50. And our net present value is the difference between the present value of dividends and initial investment. So, since the definition of IRR is a discount rate at which net present value of the project's cash flows is zero, the discount rate that we used here of 40% is internal rate of return of this project. Typically in financial models, we do not use built-in Excel NPV function. NPV function yields periodic values, which means that if your cash flows are monthly, NPV function will give you monthly NPV, which does not make sense. NPV should always be annualized. Second, NPV function does not take into account valuation date. Instead of using NPV function, we usually model it out based on the discount factors. For IRR calculations, we use XIRR function in Excel.